what I would like to share today with uh, with all of you is uh, really some experiences, um, some hopefully interesting use cases and uh, key learnings that I've uh, basically learned and developed over several years journey by far. Uh, although I do represent, uh, let's say in my current role, uh, a Royal Schiphol group, uh, what I'd like to share with you shall not be associated just with this company. It's just actually an aggregation of some experiences uh, throughout the years. So moving on uh, to the next slide. Uh, first and foremost, um, you know, that the reason for uh, me to start uh, experiencing predictive analytics was really to bring uh, finance and FP&A to the next level in uh, decision-making process. So it was really a theme for us to, to move towards a value-adding uh, function uh, uh, in a in a business uh, steering and performance management, and here I listed you know several use cases that uh, I found particularly uh, uh, helpful or, or or where predictive analytics could really prove uh, its value. As you can see, there is a couple of examples from finance or more business oriented areas, uh, if I may say so, ranging from revenue forecasting to to, to, to market size forecasting, you see a lot about you know uh, cash management and optimization, but also even compliance topics uh, uh, such as a, a, a certain fraud prevention or quality of your processes uh, assessment. Um, you know, for the sake of time, if I could maybe dive into two selected ones to give a bit more flavor. For example, the short-term revenue forecasting uh, three months forward, which is the first topic. That was uh, in a business where the need was to really increase the quality of forecasting accuracy. And the reason for that was to make sure that uh, uh, along with the accurate revenue forecast, we can optimize our asset base and mobilize our operational resources in a most efficient way. Um, so it's a very concrete need and, uh, and a very concrete uh, interest from a business. And, and, and basically, you know, adopting predictive analytics and running through a, a you know process from uh, starting from uh, hundreds of drivers uh, getting into the model training the model in the end uh, uh, getting a solution which ultimately based on uh, uh, let's say five to seven uh, drivers uh, uh, respected by the business uh, we could achieve a forecasting accuracy that was constantly overbeating you know every business forecast that was happening in the past. So uh, a, a fantastic example of where you could leverage predictive analytics uh, 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 in your own organizations. Um, touching up on another one, actually both the operating working capital optimization as well as fraud prevention, it was more like a Christopher Columbus approach. There was no specific you know, interest except of testing the quality of the processes or finding out how can you manage your cash better. And that's typical an approach where you actually take dump of your data from your either ERP system uh, uh, from general ledger, and you let actually machine learning algorithms or or AI to find certain patterns in data or certain anomalies in there that really can you can find very insightful in driving quality of your processes uh, uh, or uh, actually certain insights that can help you to steer working capital efficiency. Um, for the sake of time, maybe I will stop on these two, but I hope you will find at least the scope and the, and the different uh, examples uh, uh, quite inspiring and interesting to think very broad about where it can be adopted. Uh, what was helpful for us in the journey uh, uh, was a certain framework that is depicted here. So obviously when we talk about advanced analytics, uh, you know, the first things that comes to people's mind is, is, is data science, uh, and, and but data science is it, just a domain where, where you need to probably think about a couple of critical components ranging from uh, let's say data how can you uh, without data there is no data science obviously there is a certain uh, uh, um, education required or capability skill set that you can apply certain mathematical methods to to uh, uh, to work with the data uh, ideally supported with certain tooling and of course behind all of these are people or people capabilities. But, but, but even if you organize all these, 
uh, what's critical is that you should look at it as kind of a process where in the end you try to we try to approach always certain business challenge apply data to it and try to bring it successfully to the business and this framework repeated time over time on multiple cases led us to the couple of interesting learnings which i find quite insightful that that, that uh, uh, shaped the journey forward so moving to the next slide um you know if i would take the uh, data science component you know when we started with predictive analytics typically you know first you need to get your data uh, and that is that's a very labor intense gathering exercise with cleansing the data make them uh, you know of their proper quality uh, uh, this is where you start but over time uh, once you enter into more and more cases you quickly discover the importance of that aspect and then the theme that is really uh, helping to address that you look strategically into data and you really try to develop the whole strategy how you how you gather the data internal and external you know structured unstructured uh, uh, what have you uh, the other aspect is of course people well there is no data science with the proper capabilities so i must say that finding the people at the beginning was not an easy task i do see on the market that competition for the talent is increasing but also at the same time i think supply of the talent with the many universities offering education in this area makes it really really scalable uh, uh, these days uh, and in the end even supported with the modern tooling that is in place uh, which uh, um, basically you will have a chance to learn something more uh, later in this webinar as well uh, can really help to scale it up uh, what I, we found especially maybe another angle to it interesting on the virtue with the business is that um, when you begin with that uh, um, with that framework uh, and what we see on the next slide that the first learning is that you need to find your first use cases and actually trying to build trust with the business and you know search for some inspiration to experiment with it uh, but actually once you you know uh, pick your first battles right and, and and you will really be satisfied or find a, a, you know a great results out of that um, you know the, the the appetite for these type of activities uh, is increasing exponentially uh, and actually in many organizations that I used to, uh, let's say, uh, you know, experiment with predictive analytics, we've been moving really to to a situation where we're thinking like how to best actually use that capability to support uh, a decision making, be it in a you know planning process or being in solving a certain uh, uh, business challenge. And and uh, and actually the last one but not least, uh, you know, where it all starts is like. Uh, uh, once you find first cases right and and, and you will have uh, uh, some maturity and learning in it uh, actually uh, I've seen that there is more and more appetite to start really considering predictive analytics and data as a strategic aspect and objective for realizing goals of the company so uh, th that shows actually you know that uh, predictive analytics really can help you your teams your function move to a really much more value adding territory uh, in steering the, the business decision making or uh, uh, business planning process. Well, I think we come to uh, to last of my slides, so I would be happy to take any Q and A later on or listen to your experiences as well.